Hi dear students, uh, let's talk about regression analysis today. So regression analysis is a statistical technique for investigating and modeling the relation between variables. Simple regression considers the relation between single explanatory variable and response variable. Applications of regressions are numerous and occur in almost every field, including engineering, risk analysis, simulation, optimization, the physics and chemical sciences, economics specifically, uh, management, life and biological sciences in addition to social sciences. So in fact you can say that uh, regression analysis is probably the most widely used statistical technique. Here is the general idea and it's showing a simple regression model. Let's say I want to compare that how the co cotton percentage in fiber will affect the tensile strength of that fiber, right? So here my explanatory variable predictor independent variable will be cotton percentage and my response variable which is also my dependent variable will be my tensile strength and then when I get the data for those two variable I can explore the relation between the independent variable and dependent variable in general regression analysis is capable of answering following question so first one would be description how can we describe the relation between the dependent variable and independent variable? In addition, this regression analysis is capable of explaining that how strong is relation captured by the model. Second one is inference. That is, is the relation described by the model statistically significant? Which independent variable are the most important and which one are not? Prediction, how well does the model generalize to observation outside the sample? The simplest deterministic mathematical relation between two variables x and y is a linear relation y is equal to b0 plus b1 into x. So the set of pair x and y for which y is equal to b0 plus b1 into x determines a straight line with a slope here let's say b1 or beta1 and y intercept you can denote it by b or beta0 the objective would be 
to develop a linear probabilistic model. Here it should be noted that variable whose value is fixed by the person performing the experiment will be denoted by x and will be called the independent variable predictor or explanatory variable. For fixed x the second variable will be random and we will donate this random variable and its observed value by y and this is basically my dependent variable or you can also call it as response variable. It should be noted that factors involved in an experiment can be either quantitative or qualitative. A quantitative factor is one whose level can be associated with points on a numerical scale such as temperature, pressure, or time. However, qualitative factors are the factors for which the levels cannot be arranged in order of magnitude. Operati operators, batches of raw material, and shifts are typica typically qualitative factors because it is not uh, needed to rank them in any particular numerical order. So as far as the initial design and the analysis of experiment are concerned, both types of factors are treated identically. The experimenter is interested in determining the difference, if any, between the levels of factors. In fact, the analysis of variance treat the design factor as if it were qualitative or categorical. If the factor is really qualitative, such as operators, it is meaningless to consider the response of a subsequent run at an intermediate level of the factor. However, with the quantitative factor such as time, the experimenter is usually interested in the entire range of value used. The response from subsequent run at an intermediate factor level, that is, if the level 1, 2, 3 hours are used in the experiment, we would like to predict the response at 2.5 hours or maybe 1.5 hours or maybe at um, any value between or maybe outside we would like to predict that. Thus the experimenter is frequently interested in developing an interpolation equation for the response variable in the experiment. This equation is an empirical model of the process that has been studied. So here if I am talking about um, empirical models, uh, empirical models in which where the true relation between y and x is relatively complex yet it may be approximated quite well by a linear regression equation. Sometimes the underlying mechanism is more complex resulting in the need of a more complex approximating function. And the general approach to fitting empirical model is called uh, regression analysis. Where the uh, modeling based on the empirical observation rather than the mathematically describable relations of the system model.
let's consider a very simple example. A development engineer is interested in determining if the cotton weight percentage in a syn synthetic fiber affects the tensile strength. She has run a completely randomized experiment with five levels of cotton weight percentage and five replicates for each level. The results are shown here below. So let's say if I'm using cotton percentage of 15, first value which I got was 7 pound per square inches tensile strength, second was 7, third was 15, fourth was 11 and fifth value was 9. For a 20% weight uh, of cotton, here are the values shown. 12, 17, 12, 18, 18 and the repeat, uh, we have 5 replications for 25%, 30% and 35%. So it would be a very uh, first thing I would like to do is to draw a scatter diagram because that will uh, show the relation between weight percentage of cotton and tensile strength. So here is um, a figure representing a scatter diagram of tensile strength Y versus the weight percentage of cotton X in the fabric. The open circles on the graph are the mean tensile strengths at each value of cotton percentage. And here this one was drawn in mini tab. So So you need to go to graph, scatter plot, simple. Here you choose your y variable which is response, x is predictor and then you click OK. And this is you are going to get in. mini tab so from the scatter plot we can uh, we can see that it it's if you are going going to apply a linear fit it will not be a good fit at all so next step would be to try fitting a quadratic model and it's gonna give me this equation sec third one could be this quadratic model and here is the value the cubic one equation is given here So this is the, when I'm fitting this linear model, so here I can see that R adjusted an R square value of 1.2%, 5.3, that's very low for a quadratic model it's 59.2% and R square adjusted is 55 which is relatively acceptable and next one is cubic which is 69.4% and R adjusted square is 65% 
So from this I can conclude that cubic model is giving me a very good fit. In order to um, find the R and R square adjusted value all I need to do is to go to stat regression fitted line plot and then I define Y and X variables and then just I choose linear so this is my linear graph I can repeat this process for quadratic model here and next is my cubic model here so our initial assumption is that or you can say our null hypothesis is that, that there is no linear correlation between the model coefficients and response variable. So if p-value is high, right, it will be supporting the null hypothesis. And if p-value is small, this means that it is rejecting null hypothesis. And then there is basically linear correlation between modicle, model coefficients and the model fits well. So that, that's the conclusion here. Uh, R square is basically explaining the percent of variance about how much one variable can explain about the other variable or how much information is giving me one variable about the other variable. Higher the value of R square, better the fit. Uh, in general, we would like to fit the lowest order poly polynomial that adequately describe the system or process. In the example of tensile strength and cotton weight percentage, the cubic polynomial seems to fit better than the quadratic fit and the linear fit. So the extra complexity of the cubic model is justified. Selecting the order of the approximating polynomial is not always that easy. And however, it is relatively easy to overfit. That is to add the high order polynomial terms. But they do not really improve the fit. But increasing the complexity of the model and will often damage its usefulness as a predictor or interpolation equations. So in this example the empirical model could be used to predict mean tensile strength at values of cotton percentage within the region of experimentation. Like data was taken for 15%, 20% 25 and till 35 percent right but if I want to calculate the strength at 16 or 17 percent I can use that and let's say I chose cubical model so what I will be doing here is using this equation y will be 62.6114 minus 
zero one one multiply by seventeen, which is let's say my x minus zero point four one eight four into seventeen square, which is my quotient per percentage minus zero point zero zero seven six into seventeen cube, and that will basically give me the strength of the fiber at cotton percentage 17 right uh, in other cases the empirical model could be used for pro process optimization that is finding the levels of the design variables that result in the best values of the response and you can use analysis of variance also as it was explained previously that r square it's giving you information about the fit higher i square value means a better fit however one drawback of r square measure is that whenever an independent variable is added to the model it always increases no matter how small its contribution is so by adding variables, we can eventually obtain an R square of 100%, right? So that is why they introduced this R square adjusted. So whenever they are adding some independent variable, when you are adding variable the r square adjusted eventually will go down thereby discounting for the additional variable and that is why whenever you are looking for the fit it's always recommended to keep an or make decisions on the basis of r square adjusted not r square so this is what the explanation is here is a very simple uh, regression analysis results that we want to find that is there a relationship between weight and height right the uh, data in the excel spreadsheet will be shared with you and here because we see that the p value is very low so p value is basically rejecting when p value is very small we are we are basically rejecting null hypothesis and and the null hypothesis was that there is no um correlation between the coefficients of the model right so because we are rejecting it so this means that there is a relationship between the coefficients of the model x and y means that weight and height here are kind of correlated so this p value here the for the x uh, variable here this p value we can make decision on this one uh, if we are if you are using a software it will direct me p value if not then I would like to uh, check the this compare this f statistic value with the f table and if it is within the acceptable remit limit then we can say okay we are accepting null hypothesis and if it is out of the threshold value so we will basically reject the null hypothesis here is another uh, example very simple for the GDP and we are basically applying linear regression uh, for any particular year if I want to calculate the value of GDP just by using this equation it will give me the GDP for that particular year 
we can also apply this to population if we want to forecast population so we can always uh, apply a linear regression to this